from the District Director of Internal Revenue. District Director of Internal Revenue? Now, why should he write to me? I've never written to him. <laughs> That's a pretty dress. I wonder what he wants. Well, aren't you going to open it? Mm -hmm. Internal Revenue? That's income tax. <laughs> Susie, what have you done? I don't know. Gee, I'm afraid to open it. <laughs> Treasury Department. <laughs> see anything? Well, I can see it isn't a check. So if they aren't refunding something, that means they want something. <laughs> Greetings, staff. What? No smiling faces, no clicking heels, no smart salute for the general. General, here's a message from Garcia. Would you mind opening it for me? District Director of Internal Revenue. Mm. They want to see you and your tax records for three years ago within the next ten days. I wonder how far away I could get in ten days. Susie, don't worry about it. They investigated my return and I'm still here. Why don't you call your tax man? Have him take the rap. Oh, that's a wonderful idea. Bye. Get Mr. Richards on the phone right away. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Fred. Good morning. Peter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Peter, I want you to shake hands with Mr. Binkley Piper. Is he not the magnificent? He's great, Fred. Oh, oh, Mr. Richards? Oh, just a moment, please. I'll take it to my office. Did you draw him for fun or for money? Both. When I draw cartoons for money, I have fun. Your account? The White Star Oil Company. Huh? They have commissioned me, Fritz Koslow and Company, to do a series of cartoon commercials for the television. So I sit down at my ink bottle, and before you know it, poof! Out pops the hero, Mr. Binkley Piper. Destined to sell millions of cans of no pain valvoid. No, but alas, he cannot sell until he has a voice. That is where you come in, Peter. I give you the honor of finding me a voice for Binkley. What sort of voice? A high one, uh, but not too high. Low, but not too low. <laughs> it should be gentle, a little rough. Hot, <laughs> but not too strange. You mean with uh, pear-shaped tones like uh, this? Uh-huh, that is it, that is it. Tones like this and modulations like this. Uh, leave it to me, Fritz. I'll look through the files and see what we have. Good. I'll call you back. Uh-huh, all right. Thank you. Susie, do we have a client with a voice that sounds like this with just a touch of this? I don't know. But I just talked to a voice that had a touch of this. <laughs> my tax man. He said I'm strictly on my own because that was the year I made out my own tax so I wouldn't have to pay him. Mr. Sands, exactly what happened when they questioned you about your tax? Well, they wanted me to explain my deductions, but I shot him up in a hurry. How? I simply gave him a check for another 2500 <laughs> That's what I like about you, always so encouraging. <laughs> Susie, can you get your mind off taxes for a minute? With a monumental effort. <laughs> now, Fritz has a problem. He needs a voice to go with this new character for a series of TV commercials. TV commercials? Oh, Mr. Sands, I just couldn't concentrate on something like that today. Susie, you're getting yourself all lathered up over nothing. You know darn well they're not going to put you in jail. I know that, and you know that, but do they know that? Why well, don't you go down and find out? Well, I will as soon as I get up enough courage. They gave me ten days. Well, I couldn't stand ten days of this. Now, you go home, get your records, and beard the lion in his den. Oh, Mr. Stanford, I... That is an order. Remember, a coward dies a thousand deaths, a brave man dies but one. Hey, but, but, Mr. Go. I don't have my mind. Go. <laughs> I know it's only a TV commercial, Sam, but Fritz Caslow is building a whole series around this character. It could mean a career for you. Okay, Sam, okay. If you feel it's beneath your dignity, forget it. Yeah, I'll be talking to you. Actors. Come in. 
just wants to know I'm back. I bet it went a lot easier than you thought it would. What happened? Well... I got as far as the newsstand, and then I read the headlines about Gladstone Parker Burns, only one of the richest men in the whole world. What happened to him? Federal penitentiary. <laughs> Manage that. Evasion of income tax. Well, what's that got to do with you? But, Mr. Sands, Mr. Burns only had a battery of ten lawyers. And what did they get him? Ten years in the clink. Now, if that can happen to Mr. Burns, what do you suppose can happen to me? Susie, what did they tell you at the Bureau? Well, I don't know. I never got there. I just couldn't face it. Oh, Susie. <laughs> now, look. Would it be easier to face them on your home ground? On my home what? Where's that letter they sent you? Oh, the letter. Okay. Here, here it is. Yes, Mr. Sands? Vi, will you get me Mr. Bascom of the Office of Internal Revenue, please? You're not going to turn me in. Not now. The price on your head isn't high enough yet. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Bascom. Mr. Bascom, this is Peter Sands of International Artists. Yes. Your office has been in communication with my secretary, Miss Susan McNamara. Now, I understand that when the services of an employee are indispensable, you'll send a field representative. I'd appreciate it if you'd arrange it in Miss McNamara's case. Two o'clock today? That'll be fine. Thank you very much, Mr. Bascom. You couldn't make it two o'clock next year. <laughs> Susie, everything's going to be all right. Now, before he comes, you better let me see your records. Oh, yes, my records here. Yeah. What is this? Well, it's this my filing cabinet. What do you use for an alphabet? Hieroglyphics? Excuse me. Susie, I'm going to lunch now. Can I bring you something? Yes. Some bread and water. I might as well get used to the diet. Let's see. This goes there. Why don't you play your ace on your king? I think I'll file this under miscellaneous. I see here you've listed a business loss of 10 cents. Well, if you make an investment and don't get anything back, that's a loss, isn't it? Yeah, well, what sort of big business operation was this? Well, one day I wanted to make a call to the office from the outside, so I put 10 cents in the payphone, got a busy signal, and hung up. Well? Well, I didn't get my dime back. <laughs> There's a man out there. Oh, Vi, you've seen a man before. No! I mean, I think it's him. I think it is he. Then it must be Mr. Bascom if we both think so. What does he look like? Well, he's a giant ogre, and he carries a huge briefcase, and if he doesn't breathe fire through his nostrils, I'd be very much surprised. Goodbye, Susan. Mr. Sands, you're not deserting me now. Tradition requires that when the shooting starts, the general is far behind the line. <laughs> Carry on. Uh, but, but Mr. Sands, now that isn't it. Susie, is there anything I can do? Bake me a cake with a hacksaw in it. <laughs> well, fling wide the gates and let the ogre in. <laughs> Come in, Mr. Ogre. The name is Bascom. Oh, Miss Bascom, how do you do? <laughs> I'm Miss McNamara. How do you do? Uh, won't you sit down, please? Thank you. <laughs> Just make yourself comfortable. Thank you very uh, much. Would you like a cushion or a footstool or something? Uh, no, thank you. Oh, oh yes. Well. Now, Miss McNamara, uh, about your income tax Oh, yes, return. about my income tax. Now, I have all my records right here, and I want you to know that I am going to cooperate with you 110%. 100% will be sufficient. Uh, now, here in uh, G, you mentioned... G, Schedule G. Oh, well, now, if you don't mind, Mr. Bascom, I have a very orderly mind, and I would like to start from the beginning, because I am going to explain every little teensy weensy bitty deduction, and I don't want you to be... Confused at all. But, Miss McNamara, I... Uh, Mr. Bascom, how long have you worked for the income tax department? Five years. Five years. Well, um, I have been paying taxes for 15 years, so I do think that gives me a little bit of an edge, don't you? <laughs> so, uh, I just want 
to explain everything to you. Well, you're very kind. Thank you. Now, right here, on page three, I deducted $24.33 because that's the amount I paid in state taxes on gasoline. You see, that's the year I had my car. I uh, assume you have proof of how many gallons you used? Oh, yes, I certainly have. Right here. Green stamps? Green stamps. You see, every time I would fill my car with gasoline, I would take green stamps. Then I would count the number of stamps I had, and I would divide by ten. Then I would multiply by the number of gallons my tank held. Then I would divide by six cents, which is the amount you pay on uh, tax, you know, you pay on gasoline. And I came up with a perfectly logical deduction of $24.33. But, but, Miss McNamara, th there aren't enough stamps in this book to justify a deduction of, of $24.33. Oh, well, I know that. You see, I turned in some of my books on a home permanent kit. How does the department know about that? Well, all they have to do is look. I have a permanent way. Miss McNamara, I have to explain these things to my superior. H how is he going to know about the home permanent? Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> that is a problem, isn't it? Well, I tell you what, there's some little hairs back here I don't need. I'll just snip them off and send them with you. Miss McNamara, in the course of my work, I've encountered many methods of bookkeeping. Yours, yours is by far the most unique. Well, now, let's go on to the accident, shall we? Accident? What accident? You mean you didn't read about it in my returns? It's the one I had the day I drove this important client of Mr. Sands. Well, what happened? Well, I smashed into a lamppost and damaged my car to the tune of 4250. That's what happened. 4250? Uh-huh. Yes, oh, well, here's the receipt. Well, what makes you think you can deduct this? Well, because of what it says right here in your own little booklet. Let me see, I read it. Here we are. Transportation expenses include payments for actual travel, or if you use your own car, the business portion of the operation, including fuel and repairs. But, Miss McNamara, you would have had the accident even if you hadn't been on an errand for your employer. Oh, no, I wouldn't. Well, how do you know? Well, because of the importance of this client. If this client hadn't been this important, I wouldn't have worn my new coat with those great big wide cuffs. But what do the wide cuffs have to do with the accident? Well, I'm glad you asked that. Now, this was a very cheap and very smart coat. You see, it was very new at that time, these great big huge cuffs like this. And I was just going to make a left turn like this, and my sleeves caught in the gear shift and threw the car out of control and bang, no more lampo. And not only that, I drove over all the broken glass and tore up two of my tires. Here's the receipt for that. Now, let me see, I have it right here. Let's see. Um, the receipt for the lamp. Okay. Here we are. Miss McNamara, I'm very much afraid that... Okay, excuse me. Yes, Mr. Sand. Miss McNamara, would you come in a moment, please? Yes, sir. Well, would you excuse me just a minute, please? Susie. Yes? I'm been eavesdropping. Oh, well, how am I doing? <laughs> well, you, you probably won't put you in solitary. Well, what'll I do? Do you have any ideas? Yes, you're using the wrong approach. Wrong approach? You're forgetting the power of a woman's tears. <laughs> I mean. Oh, dear, that's a wonderful idea. May I? Be my guest. Hello? Oh, hello, Fritz. No, I'm sorry, we don't have a voice for you yet. I'll get Susie on it right away. Oh, uh, excuse me, Mr. Vasco. Mr. Sands just wanted to explain to me about a matter of procedure. Oh, that's quite all right. Uh -huh. You know, Miss McNamara, although your bookkeeping might be a little ragged around the edges, there's one thing I admire about you. Oh, well, what's that? Your, your forthrightness. You don't resort to feminine trickery. Now, some women try to soften me up with tears. That's when I really get tough. Tough? Plenty. Oh, <laughs> well, of course, I wouldn't resort to anything like that. <laughs> I just have a little cold. <laughs> well, 
now, now, where were we? Let me see, back to work. Um, here we are, 10.53, business gifts. For whom? For business associates. <laughs> I would hardly take a deduction unless it were business. Uh, specifically, which business associates? Mr. Bascom, I paid your office $752.62 last year. Do you know what you did with it? No, but... Yes. Come to think of it, what did you do with all that money? How should I know? Well, it's your business to know, Mr. Bascom. This is a government of the people, for the people, and by the people. And I would like to know what you did with that money, because I'm a people. But the taxpayer's money is used for many different purposes. I am only interested in what happened to my $752.62. Well, maybe it was put into a, a, an army barracks, or, or an aeroplane, or, or a destroyer. Which destroyer? Well, how should I know? Uh, maybe the Robert Farnham. You mean I own the Robert Farnham? No, no, no. You, you just own a part of it. Which part? Oh, oh how should I know? Maybe the, uh, the compass. $752.62 for a compass? Uh, Mr. Baskin. I bought a Boy Scout knife for my little cousin, which had a compass and only cost one dollar and a half, including the knife. <laughs> but, Miss McNamara... Well, is it or is it not true that the Robert Farnham was lost a little while back? Well, that's true. Yes. Yeah. Well, for your information, my little cousin with his little old compass has never been lost. But lots of ships get lost and run aground. Yes. Yeah. And when the Robert Farnham ran aground, it was so smashed up they had to tow it into dry dock. And here you are, wanting more money to pay for the damage caused by that crazy mixed-up compass that you bought. Now, what do you have to say for yourself? <laughs> Miss McNamara, I'm not the one that's on trial. You're the one that's being questioned. And so far, we haven't even touched on the main point I came to see you about. We haven't? We haven't even come close. Is it serious? Anything pertaining to taxes is serious. Yeah. Uh, would you excuse me a moment, please? Uh, yes, bye. I'll be right out. Did she buzz you? Oh, no. No, but she was planning to. But you, you know how it is. When people work together a long time, they just anticipate each other. Well, I'll be right back. <laughs> Bye. My head is about to roll, and you're just the one who can stop it. What do you want me to do? Well, keep the phones ringing. If I can stall him long enough, maybe he'll get tired and go. All right, Susie. Operation Switchboard is about to begin. <laughs> uh, oh, dear, if it isn't one thing, it's another. Hello? Oh, Genevieve. Oh, uh, Genevieve, I can't talk to you now. There's someone in the office. Uh -huh. I'll call you back later. Okay. Sorry. Hello? Mrs. Mayling? Oh, how are you, Mrs. Mayling? <laughs> well, fine, thank you. Oh, yes, I would love to have that recipe for custard cake. Oh, could you give it to me now? Oh, fine. This will only take a minute. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> Two cups of rolled oats. Uh huh. Two thirds of a cup of sifted enriched flour. Oh, fine. Mm -hmm. Two thirds of a cup of brown sugar. Mm -hmm. Two teaspoons full of cinnamon. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Miss McNamara. This is Mr. Bascom. Oh, Mr. Bascom. Well, I thought you'd gone. Oh, yes, sir. I'll forget about the recipe. <laughs> oh, I, I'm terribly sorry about those calls, but it's just one of those days people keep annoying me. Well, I often have an evening like that at home, but I know what to do about it. What? Well, uh, I answer with a phony voice, like this. 
Hello. Then if it's someone I don't want to speak with, I say, uh, I'm very sorry, but Mr. Baskin has gone to Boston. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Do it again. Would you really like it? Well, it might come in very handy. Let's hear some more. Well, if you can stand it. Uh, there's no use calling Boston. He won't answer. He's got bronchitis and he can't talk. <laughs> Something wrong? No, something may be very right. I just have an idea where that voice may come in handy. Excuse me. Mr. Sands. Mr. Sands, I found it. Found what? Well, you... Where? Mr. Bascom. Susie, I will have no part of bribery. Bribery? Yes. Build him up, make him a lot of promises, offer him a new career just so he'll go easy on you. Mr. Sands, I am not going to let a promising career go down the drain because you, you're a stuffy moralist. If you don't have Fritz Caslow audition Bascom, I will. He is the voice of Bingley Piper. Is he not magnificent? For the twentieth time, I tell you, Bascom, you are this man. But you're making a mistake, Mr. Caslow. I I'm not a cartoon. <laughs> Look, Mr. Bascom, there is nothing to it. All we do is record your voice and then synchronize it with the animated cartoon. It's guaranteed to be an absolutely painless way of making a lot of money. Uh, show him some copy, Fitz. Here. Just read this, Mr. Bascom. I am Mr. Binkley Piper. Look at me. Take a good look. Do I look like the type of person who would lie to you? Do I? Of course I don't. Would I lie to you about no ping veil foil? No. You know the answer to that already. Great. <laughs> is that all there is to it? Yes. You see, this man has trouble starting his car until he uses no ping veil foil. Now, with sound effects, we show the trouble he has. First, he cannot get it started. You know how it is on a cold morning. Oh, I certainly do that. <laughs> oh, this man is a gold mine. Sound effects, too. You've just doubled your salary. Uh, and, uh, Mr. Bascom, you're going to need an agent, and I just happen to have a contract in. Well... Uh, just a minute. Th this is all coming so quickly. That's the way it is in show business. Feathers one day, chicken the next. <laughs> well, uh, how much money could I make? Whatever you're making now, I triple it. And I'll give you a seven-year contract. When can you start? Well, uh, I I'll let you know as soon as I make a phone call. <laughs> very grateful to you, Miss McNamara. If there's anything I can do for you... Uh, well, I might be able to think of something. Good, good. Now we go right to work, Mr. Bascom. Come. Uh, but, but Mr. Bascom, what about my income tax? Oh, we have nothing further to discuss. I resigned from that job. You resigned? Oh, that's wonderful. Then you mean I can forget the whole thing? Well, before you do, I think you should talk to Mr. Bolton. Mr. Bolton? <laughs> but, well, who's he? My successor at the office. Oh, no. This is where I came in. Oh, Mr. Bascom, I couldn't go through this again. But, Miss McNamara, your, your tax problem is a simple one. It is? Well, every time I tried to get around to it, you, you found another squirrel cage to put me into. Oh. Well, Mr. Bascom, now that you've resigned from the tax department, you couldn't give me just a little teensy-weensy hint as to what my problem is? Well, in Schedule G, you listed other income of $3,000, but you failed to state the nature of that income. Oh. Well, that's the year I inherited all that money from Uncle George. Did you pay tax on that inheritance? Well, I most certainly did. Oh, then you made a mistake. Inheritance tax is always deducted before the heir receives his money. Then I'm square with the government. Well, not quite, Miss McNamara. Uh -huh. You see, Miss McNamara, the government owes you a refund of some eight hundred dollars. Eight hundred dollars? Plus interest. Oh, Mr. Bascom! Oh. 